Good morning, everyone. As always, place the cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. You know, living for God is not a one-day thing. It's the rest of your life. You want to dwell in the Lord, house of the Lord for the rest of your life? Think about it. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That means seeking him, being committed to him more than anything else, anybody else in this world. He said, if you love mother, father, sister, brother, child, whatever more than me, you cannot be my servant. We got to, God got to be the head of our lives. I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care who thinks they take priority over God. Nobody takes priority over God. Nobody. Not your kids, not yourself. Nothing. Not work. God has the priority and the absolute say so. And he'll balance everything out just perfectly when you put him as the head. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. One thing I don't realize about my walk as a Christian is like certain things I do, I know where the presence of the Lord is around. I do this with my hands. As I don't know what it is. It's like I know that he's working through me when I start doing my hands like that. It's like a definite sign. And so, cause people have told me that before. I'd be like, you ever notice you do that? And I'm like, I don't know what it is. It's like, he's bringing thoughts to me. He's telling me what to say. So I can be ready to say it. Today I'm going to read from chapter eight of Kings. And I'm going to start reading the prayer of Solomon after he built the temple of the Lord. Let's go to his, with uh, 1 Kings chapter 8, starting with verse 22. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands to heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath who keep his covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. I told you the Bible, the God, God is after your heart. You know how you always have your, like when, when growing up you had a first love and ain't nothing really, like the first person you was in love with is a different type of love. You know, it's like that, my mom used to call it puppy love, but it's something that stuck with you, something you remember. But God is our first love. He loved us first before we loved him. So if it's, if it's your first love, you got to stay in it. You got to keep your heart with God. Who has kept with thy servant David, my father, that thou promised him. Thou spakest also with thy mouth and has fulfilled it with thine hand as it is this day. Therefore now, Lord God, is Israel, keep with thy servant David, my father, that thou promised him. Saying, Thou shalt not fail thee, fail thee a man in my sight to sit in the throne of Israel, so that the children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou spakest to thy servant, my father. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and the heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house that I have built it. Yet thou have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant, and to his supplication, O Lord my God. To hearken to the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayed before thee today. That thine eyes may be opened toward this house night and day. Even toward the place of which thou hast said. Now think about this people. David is, is, is uh, making a temple a house of the Lord. But think about your personal house. Think about your house. You want, He said what Joshua said. As for me and my house we will serve the Lord. So think about your house. Most people are always worried about the church house. When you read this, think about your house. <laughs> I'm just telling you this now. My name shall be there that thou make hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, when they shall pray toward this place. And hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place. And when thou hast hearest, forgive. If any man trespass against his neighbor and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear and the oath come before thine altar in his, this house, then hear thou in heaven and do and judge thy servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness. 
when that people of Israel be smitten down before, look, man, people always say the Old Testament Bible, God was not forgiving. You got to think about it. God said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and today. The same forgiveness that the New Testament is in the Old too. When our people of Israel be smitten down before thy enemy because they have sinned against thee and shall turn again to thee and confess thy name and pray and make supplication unto thee in this house, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people Israel and bring them again into the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin, when thou afflictest them, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel, that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk. You see that every time you fall, you keep calling on the Lord. That's one thing you will see is a pattern here. He said, none is not, no, nobody has lived a sin-free life. You're going to hear that in a second too. If give rain upon thy land, which thou hast given to thy people of it for an inheritance. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locusts, or if there be a caterpillar, if the enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, whatever plague, whatever sickness there be, what prayer and supplications ever be made by any man or by all the people of Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hands toward this house, then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive and do. Now think about it. We got direct contact to Jesus now. You ain't got to pray towards Solomon's temple. You pray straight towards the source. When Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross he gave us direct contact to the heavenly father you ain't got to go to a priest you ain't got to go to a priest we got a high priest that's sitting next to the right hand of god that's written in the word too then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways whose heart thou knowest for thou even thou, thou only knowest the hearts of all the children of men that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. You're going to see a lot of repetition. Fear thee. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and understanding. Moreover, concerning a stranger. Now, think about it. He's going to talk about the Gentiles right here in the Old Testament. For all you people that act like God is just for the children of Israel. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel, but come out for a far country for thy name's sake. For they say, Hear of thy great name and of thy strong hand of thy stretched out arm when he shall come and pray toward this house hear thou in the heaven thy dreading place and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for that all the people of the earth may know that thy, thy name to fear thee as do thy people israel and that they may know that this house which i have built is called by thy name and to think of a thing that i think in regards to your house now because he said every house is built on something so you're trying to build your house on the rock you know, a lot of people are like, well, this is my house. I'm going to go to church to, 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 to hear from God. But that's not enough. Don't you think your dwelling place where you sleep should be covered in the blood of God? What's the use of going to the house of the Lord one day a week? Then your house is like the devil's house. <laughs> it just don't make sense. If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, whatsoever thou shalt send them, and shalt pray unto the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the, the house that I have built for thy name, then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, but there is no man that sinneth not. Hmm. Follow you self-righteous people, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they can carry them away captive to the land of their enemy for far or near. Yet if they shall think, rethink themselves in the land, whether they will carry captive, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness, and so return unto thee with all their heart, with all their soul, in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee, Lord, thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause. And forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee. And give them compassion before them who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them. Sit down at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Do, do you hear that in here? For they be thy people, and thine inheritance which thou broughtest forth out of Egypt, from the midst of the furnace of iron, that thine eyes may be opened unto the supplication of thy servant, and unto the supplication of thy people Israel, to hearken unto them, and all that they call for unto thee. For thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth, to be thine inheritance. Think about it. God's still doing that now. He still separates his people. The great divider. 
As thou spakest by the land of Moses, hand of Moses, thy servant, when thou broughtest our father out of Egypt, O Lord God. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication unto the Lord, he rose from the, before the altar of the Lord from kneeling on his knees and his hands spread up to heaven. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice saying, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised. There have not failed one word of all his promises, his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses' servant. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us that he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments where he commanded our fathers. And let these my words, where have I have made supplication before the Lord, be nigh to the Lord our God day and night, that he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times, as the matter shall require, that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. Let your heart therefore be perfected, perfect with the Lord our God. Then what he said, let your heart be perfect with the Lord our God. Perfect. How you can perfect your heart? Get your heart perfect with the Lord thy God to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. All right. Then King, then Solomon made some sacrifices. And let's see what happens right next. Chapter 9, chapter 2. After he had made this big prayer. And we do it. We do the same thing. And God always tells us, okay, you said this. Now it's time for me to speak. The Lord appeared to Solomon, chapter 9, verse 2. The Lord appeared to Solomon on the second time, and as he had appeared unto him in Gibeon. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to my name there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, integrity of heart and in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded thee, and will keep my statutes and my judgment, then I will establish the throne of the kingdom up upon Israel forever, as I have promised to David thy father, saying, There shall no fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. But if you shall at all turn from following me, you are your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I cut off Israel out of the hand land which I have given them and this house which I have hollowed for my name will I cast out of my sight and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all the people and at this house which is high everyone that passes by shall be astonished and shall hiss and they shall say why have the Lord done thus unto this land and to this house and they shall answer because they forsook the Lord their God now think about your house now think about your house who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt and have taken up hold upon other gods and have worshipped them and served them. Therefore have the Lord brought upon them all this evil. All right. So he gave, that's the second time he appeared to Solomon. Well, it's going to be a third time. The third time ain't going to be that good. Chapter, seven, chapter 11. Now this is a man of God that prayed this prayer. That's why us as Christians, we got to stay at it because there are stories in this Bible that shows you people who didn't stay at it. Solomon was old. Now watch this. But King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Exodians, and Hittites of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, you shall not go into them. Neither shall they come into your heart to you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. You got to be careful who you marry. Be careful who you be around. Solomon claimed to these in love. All right, there go another word, love. If you love your love your enemies as yourself, but not like this. You, uh, you don't love in a way that's against God. Do you understand? And he had 700 wise princes and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. Now they said, you, did you read the parable of the strong man? Think about how many demons, how many evil spirits were sent at Solomon. Let's see how many. Plenty. And he said, had 700 wives, princes, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned his heart. That's the, how many? 900 people? It took 900 wives to subdue Solomon. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. Yeah, they were people. But they were demons too. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord, his God, as was the heart of David, his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. 
Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemos, the abomination of Moab, in the hill there is before Jerusalem, and Molech, the abominations of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his wives. Lord have mercy. The same man that made the longest prayer in the world, tell everybody else a certain way to live. Forgot what he read. But I forgot what he said. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. And had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done unto thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant, and my statutes which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding in the days I will not do it for thy father's David's sake, because God is not a liar, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. How about I would not rent it away all the kingdom, but would give one tribe to thy son of David, for David, my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. And the Lord stirred up an adversary to Solomon. Bam. We got to be careful. We have to be careful out here. You see, people, that's why I do these videos every day if God allowed me to. If it's in his will for me to do it Monday through Friday. You know why? Because we don't supposed to get tired of chasing and seeking the Lord. We don't need to let nothing turn our way from the Lord. You understand? You see, David made this. And you know, so many of us do that same thing. You know how many Christians? He said it's better to obeyed than the sacrifice and he said the vow, vows made to the Lord are binding and a lot of us open our mouth and say things that we shouldn't that we should we mean well I'm sure Solomon meant very well when he did this he was so happy and this and that and then throughout his life I'm sure it took a while for him to get 900 wives and concubines combined so that means with each wife he did a different evil act you know why God don't want you to marry outside of his people? And when I say his people, people who serve God, I don't care about your color or nothing like this. I only want to get into Ruth, how she was a Moabite, but she was converted. So any soul, and the Bible just read about the strangers. You know why he said that? Because his grandmother, great, great, great grandmother was a Moabite woman who turned from Moab to worship the most high God. So David, Solomon knew the history. He knew what could happen. He knew how the Lord can save anyone if they call upon him and turn to him. I remember he was like, Ruth was like, Ruth and Naomi. Naomi was like, go back home. He's like, no, where you go, where you, where you go, I'm going, and I'm going to serve your God. It's like she renounced the gods of Moab. But there's still some more about women. So, But the thing is, people, you don't know the difference between somebody who's trying to push you to God and push you away from him. And Solomon was just the wisest man to ever walk the earth. And I find this very confusing, very strange that this happened to him. You know what I'm saying? Knowing his father, knowing what his father went through. I'm sure David told him, hey man, you know, uh, when I was young, man, I'm about your age, you know, I was sitting on the rooftop. And saw this fine thing, but she was butt naked on the roof. And I was, I don't, I don't know what happened. I was just up there and I was like, man, get her to me, boy. She was so beautiful. You know what I'm saying? And I got her and I committed adultery with her. I got her pregnant. And, uh, man, all hell break loose after that, boy. The Lord came to me and told me this story through one of the prophets about a man that was rich man that had everything he had. And, uh, he had this and that. And then the, the, the little Lord man I ain't had nothing. He just had one row. But the rich man want to take the rope. And me being a fool, I'm like, who is this man? Go get him. He's like, it's you. Oh, Lord, it's me. It's, it's me. I'm sure he told that story to his son. <laughs> and how he had to so he was like, you know, God put strife in my house for the rest of my life because of that transgression. I'm sure he told Solomon that. I'm sure his mama told him that too. Hey, man, you know. Me and your daddy met on some strange circumstances. You know, the Lord punished us both for this. We lost a son. It was a son before you, Solomon. You know we had a son before you now. You know, we prayed that the Lord would take keep him, but the Lord took him because of what we did. 
I'm sure he, all this stuff was embedded in I'm sure all the stories of Moses embedded because he talked about it. Cussing. But yet in old age, something happened. Most people think it just happened gradually. But now, honey, come your binds. I don't know how old Solomon was when he died. But 900, that took a process. So that means the Lord let him marry a woman. And let the first one, he be like, well, let's see. The first one, he she changed the heart. Let me see if the second one was. Let me see if he finally going to get it. And then the way to, he waited till old. And it never showed Solomon repent. Y'all ever paid attention to that? Let me pause and continue.